Oh, uh, hey everybody, how you doing? Teching here. Um, I seem to have turned myself into an adorable little penguin plushie, just as you do. Um, let me undo it so we can, uh, move on with the video. Transformation release! Okay, now I appear to be a can of Pringles, which, despite my cheesy deliciousness, uh, not exactly where I need to be. Release! Okay, no, I can see a few problems with this. Release! No! 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 Ugh. Okay, good. There we go. Finally! Um, anyway, today's video is going to be about the mythical zone. Dog, dog, fruit, model, nine tail fox. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Okay, checks out. Nine tail fox. Oh, I love the videos that require me to go do research in mythology. It's one of my great muses, and it should be yours too, because as we all know, this is my channel, so you have to like everything I like. Just kidding, of course. Actually, I discovered recently, or I came to the realization that while I do enjoy studying myths and various uh, gods and demons and uh, just mythological creatures in general, I probably would not like to live during that era. Like, because you have to understand, at one point, for more or less, a lot of these creatures were actually feared by the people of that time because they just didn't know any better. There was probably a time where people were afraid that a dragon could, you know, descend down from the mountain and burn their entire village into smithereens. It, it might not have been a very prevalent fear, but you might be like, I don't know, I don't know, guys. That guy last night told us a story about how a dragon burned down his village. That might happen to us, because you don't, there's no way to fact check this shit, you don't know, you're just living in some village out in the middle of nowhere. Alright, so, the Kitsune, or the Kumiho, or the Hotin, however you want to go about saying it, uh, it's all kind of basically the same deal. The Nine-Tailed Fox, it originated in Eastern mythology, however, not Japanese though, that was something I found out today. Uh, kind of the same deal with the dragons though, I just probably need to start expecting that most lores and myths from Japan did originate from China. Uh, the Nine-Tailed Fox Spirit, I think a lot of us are probably, this is one of the more well-known mythological creatures just because of like Naruto and Inuyasha. A lot of anime that we've watched up to this point um, have definitely included the nine-tailed fox lore in there. Um, not all the exact same thing, like you don't have the nine-tailed fox in Naruto Kurama going around transforming into a sexy lady. That's Naruto that does that. There's the origin of that, kids! That's, that's one of their staple tricks. The fox will transform into a beautiful young woman with perfect skin and, in my case, if my preference, very large bazongas. Hence why we have all the three uh, fabulous ladies from One Piece here in pop form, because do, do you not find pop figures sexy? Am, am I the only one that finds these attractive? Okay, I guess I'll move Nami's figure a little bit over here. And then, okay, is that better? Okay, cool. But anyway, yeah. Um, so nine-tailed foxes. Uh, what are they exactly? Are they gods? Are they demons? Are they guardian spirits? Okay. Well, the general idea is they're like little trickster demons. Uh, the the fox, not just in Eastern lore. This has kind of spread to all around the world in some form or another. But whenever you're talking about fox spirits or just foxes in general, they are tricky little bastards. Okay. Usually leaving humans humans down a path of misfortune or accidents, um, you know, not, not really fun, you know, creatures to be around. Now, that's not the case in every single story you're going to read about them. Sometimes foxes are guardian spirits that'll help out, or they are familiars to their human masters and all that stuff, but, uh, yeah, when it comes down to the thick of it from mostly what we're talking about in terms of, like, anime and manga, yeah, they are, uh, they're tricksters. You don't usually trust them, and we've seen that with a lot of, like, uh, anime adaptations of it you know they're they're very devious or malicious you know you don't want to trust them or if you just follow them it's probably not going to end well um so in the most recent One Piece chapter, chapter 925, spoilers, we uh, found out that the mythical zone Ninetale Fox does in fact exist, and it's in the hands of Katarina Davon, the Crescent Moon Hunter and the Sixth Titanic Captain of the Sixth Fleet of the Black Beard Pirates. 
Zay ha 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 ha. So, um, yeah, this is kind of scary. This is scary for a lot of different reasons, okay? Now, one of the things I thought this was going to be was uh, that Katarina Davon sort of has the upgraded version of Mr. Two Bon Clay's Mane Mane no Mi, or the clone clone fruit. Quick refresher, the clone clone fruit that Mr. Two had allows him to copy the likeness of anybody that he touches with his right hand, and then he can revert back to his original form with his left hand. Uh, I might be mixing those hands up, but I'm pretty sure it's the way I said it. So what he does, all he has to do is just kind of touch the person he wants to copy's face with his right hand, and then he can touch them, and his, uh, his devil fruit has an auto-save feature. <laughs> So that's interesting. So he'll always remember every single face he touches, even if it's like a thousand faces. He'll remember every single one perfectly, so when he touches his face, uh, he can transform into a perfect replica. And it's not just their faces either. As we've seen with Nami, he can transform his entire body. Oh, yes. Uh, but he's an Okama, so it kind of works out. It doesn't really matter for him, you know? Um, now, I originally assumed, like, okay, well, let's go with that. Let's expand that a little bit. The mythical zone fruit, the nine-tailed fox, because the foxes usually tend to transform into humans, particularly beautiful women. What if, though, they would be able to, uh, he would be able to turn into, or, or she, in this case, with Katarina Davon, would be able to transform into any object or person? So I was kind of doing some research into that. Maybe if there was some, uh, you know, uh, story where a nine-tailed fox did not just transform into a beautiful woman, they transformed into, like, I don't know, a bridge or something, so that when a human was trying to cross it, the the uh, bridge would transform back into the fox, and the fox would be on the other side of the river, like, <laughs> and then you'd be like, you damn freaking nine-tailed fox, I'm gonna kill you! So I was trying to find maybe there was something like that, and unfortunately I couldn't. It really... It is really pretty much locked in that the way that the Kitsune or the uh, the Kumihos are, are set up, like, no, they transform into humans, uh, ostensibly women, and the, the idea is to, like, lure the men away. You know, kind of like the uh, Eastern Asian uh, variant of the succubus in a, in a certain context. Not exactly, because whereas the succubi are primarily like sexual demons, like they'll like, they'll have sex with, they'll bang you and then they'll suck your soul out. Guess where? <laughs> you know, like that's the kind of thing the succubi do and the incubi. But no, these, uh, the idea was like transforming into a woman, just like kind of luring them away into the yokai realm or whatever like that. He's like, oh, I'm a, I'm a drunk, you know, uh, 30 something year old male in, you know, ancient China. Glug, glug, glug. Oh, a beautiful woman waving me into the dark alley. All right, let's go see what's going on down that neck of the woods. You know, and then they just never show up again the next day. It's like, hey, where did, uh, where did she? Go. I'm like, where's Shin? He's leading that army over there. He's a general. No, not that Shin, you idiot. The Shin that was out drinking last night that's a freaking bum. I'm like, oh, that dude. Yeah, we never found him. <laughs> so, yeah, he's gone. Okay. Um, so, probably not going to do that. Probably, maybe, but probably not going to do it because the other mythological creature that we're going to be discussing here, uh, the two most primary ones, like the ones that are kind of told as stories to little kids in Japan, uh, are the nine-tailed fox, the kitsune, and the tanuki or the raccoon dog, or Tony Tony Chopper, so to speak. So, the Tanuki, probably also a mythical creature that I'm sure a lot of us have, you know, heard about before through anime and, and various uh, Asian lore. Uh, the Tanuki is a raccoon dog that can basically transform into anything. Uh, and his, their dona domain is usually objects. And the idea how this worked, this story I can tell you here, is that there was a abbot at a temple. Right, and they're you know they're working at the temple. They're doing their priest stuff. I don't know whatever whatever uh, Chinese or Japanese monks did back in the old days. You know they're doing their thing. And one of the priests goes up to the abbot and he's like, "I want you to boil some water in this pot." And the abbot is like, "All right, sir, I'll do that." So he takes out the pot and he puts the water in it. He leads it up to the fire to start the boil. He was bearing he was being a little rough with it though, just kind of pouring the water in, throwing it up on the fire. And all of a sudden, before you know it, the pot is like, "Hey." Stop it! You know, being, you're being you be more gentle, you idiot. Now, at that point, I would say that the abbot must have been maybe sneaking some some grass behind the, the temple. What was going on back there? I don't know. But uh, yeah, the pot starts talking to him, and then it sprouts a tail, legs, and the head of a raccoon dog. 
Um, now, I'm not really sure what happens in the rest of this story. I would assume it involved the abbot, like, OH MY GOD, IT'S A DEMON! He picks up, like, a club, the temple, Japanese temple flail, or whatever, ah, 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 he just pounded the, the, the pot into, a, you know, non-existence and just killed the tanuki, but he didn't. Um, so yeah, that's the story there. Uh, now, this was something that a fan of mine actually brought up, uh, recently. I completely missed this, uh, I don't remember if I brought it up during the review. I don't think I did. In one of the first chapters of Wano, when Luffy arrived, right, and he met Tama, and she took him back to her home village, Amagasa Village, and he met the Tengu, in the scene, and I'll throw it up here, the scene where Tama is making Luffy the rice and the pickles, that's like, that's all the food they have, in the right and the corner of the room, you can see the Tanuki pot. Now, whether or not Oda is going to use that as like a, like a plot device or he's going to like, oh yeah, by the way, there's a Tanuki. Because in Wano, it's already been established like every mythical creature from Japanese mythology uh, is in Wano. Like we have the Koma Inus, we have the, the baboons, we have demons, uh, we have the snake lady Yokai from who's the school teacher. Like that's just commonplace. And we have dragons with Kaido. So that's just like what Oda's going with here. I'm just going to cram every mythical creature I can into this setting. Um, they might be very prominent, like the Koma Inu, or they might just be, like, background characters like that Tanuki pot. But, hey, the funny thing is, right now in Amagasa Village, Chopper is there. Chopper is in Tama's house tending to her wounds in the same room as the Tanuki. So, I would find that hilarious if Chopper was like, just, Okay, Tama, you should be okay. Just get a lot of rest and you'll be fine. And he's looking around the room and he's, this, this pot comes like, We should get her some hot water to, you know, like, uh, put on her head. And the Tanuki pot just, <laughs> Walks over and Chopper's like, Oh my god! Raccoon dogs do exist! <laughs> oh no, or, or Chopper was like, you're a reindeer! <laughs> like, he's the exact opposite. Like, people are always mistaking him for a raccoon dog. And in this one case, he's mistaking the Tanuki for a reindeer. That would be hilarious. But, okay, we don't know. Hey, I don't know. It might just be a background thing. Might just be a decoration. I don't know where Oda's going with this. But, yeah. The Tanukis are usually the creatures that transform into the objects and the inanimates. And when it comes to the Kitsunes, they're the ones that transform into people. So, what is, uh, what, what would be the difference, though? Th this could still be an upgraded version of the Mane Mane no Mi. And I understand the Mane Mane no Mi is not a zone, it's a paramecia. Usually when we do the, uh, the Devil Fruit upgrades, like, uh, Oda came out and said, like, some Devil Fruits have a superior and inferior variant. Like, uh, the, uh, Yuki Yuki no Mi, who, which is Monet's Snow Snow Fruit, is the inferior variant of Aokiji's He He or Chili Chili Fruit. Um, they're both Logias. Um, Mr. Mr. One, Supa Supa no Mi, or the Blade Blade Fruit, is the inferior version of Miss, um, a baby, Miss Baby Five's, uh, Mrs. Baby Five, now she got married, Mrs. Baby Five's uh, Buki Buki no Mi, or the Arms Arms Fruit, right? So, we haven't, usually when we see the upgrade and inferior, it's usually in the same class, but that was never stated as a direct rule. It was like, oh, the upgrade and, you know, the, uh, the downgrade, I guess, have to be in the same class of Devil Fruits. So, hey, we, we might get that case here. So, so the restriction placed on Mr. One, though, I mean, Mr. Two, Bonkle, was he had to touch the person he wanted to mimic first with his right hand. It's possible that with Katarina Davon's nine-tailed fox zone, she might actually be able to morph into anybody, uh, maybe as long as she sees their likeness. Now, Absalom, she, the only person we've seen her transform into so far was Absalom, who was present on the island. And so we don't know what happened there. Absalom could have gotten captured if she did have to physically, you know, touch the person she wants to transform into she could have easily done it there with Absalom uh, or uh, it could just be anything like give me a picture and then I can transform into that person no matter who they are so I think you can all see the issues with this she could I think the most obvious one is she could transform into a straw hat or I mean I don't think the Blackbeard Pirates are they might arrive at Wano at some point I don't think they will but if they were going to she could transform into Kanemon or a member of the Alliance and mess with people that way not even so much to to sabotage them internally 
but maybe just to learn what's going on. Sort of like a spy, a mole. In fact, Blackbeard somehow figured out what was all going on in Wano. And I don't think that was because of Katarina Davon, because she's at Honeycomb Island. I mean, I guess she could have went to Wano, transformed into somebody, got some news, and then came back. I don't know how far Wano is from the Beehive Island that Blackbeard rules over. It, he might have, like, a you know, another spy working underground there, or he might have some knowledge or a hidden Den Den Mushi somewhere where he can find out, you know, what's going on in Wano. But the fact is, Wano is an isolated country, and Blackbeard knew about what was going on there with Luffy and Kaido. So, Katarina Davon, I don't think it's very likely, but it's a possibility. Uh, she could just, you know, uh, relay information back without really attacking them. She could transform into one of the Straw Hats, and if it's a perfect likeness, she could sneak on board. The thing with Katarina Davon and the thing with the Kitsunes that kind of line up is the Kitsunes have a, have a propensity for transforming into beautiful women. How it usually goes is it depends on how old the fox is. Uh, it's like leveling up in an RPG, kind of. Uh, when they reach 50 years old, or level 50, I guess, they ha a fox has the ability to transform into a woman. And this isn't even, like, this is like any fox. Like, foxes are, like, in general, are regarded in this high esteem in, in these countries. So at age 50, they can transform into a woman. At age 100, they can transform into a beautiful woman. So, take that, whatever you will. Uh, and then at age 1,000, uh, they, like, literally ascend into godhood. And they become divine beings. So that's kind of a crappy little level up structure in an RPG. Level 50, you get this. Level, one, level 100, you get this. And then you have to wait till level 1000 until you can ascend to godhood. So that's, that's like 900 levels there where you're just like, oh, I'm just grinding. Eventually I'll get there. It's probably like one of those app games, you know, you just have to keep tapping. I want to level up my Kitsune, you know? Um... But something that lines up here with Devon and the Kitsune are uh, their obsession with beautiful women. Because Katarina Devon's backstory that we found out in Viva Ricard is she literally goes around the world and whenever she finds a woman that's particularly beautiful, that she views as beautiful, because that's something very important to her, the ideal beauty, she lops their head off and then takes it back with her as a trophy that she mounts on her wall. I don't know if Oda could actually show that, because that's pretty freaking dark, but that is, in fact, her backstory. Now, it wasn't explicitly stated if Davon goes after women that are more beautiful than her, or she just goes after beautiful women in general. And also, I was making a few assumptions here. It's possible that Davon might view herself as, like, the ultimate beauty. And that she might go after women that are like she thinks are challenging her domain or she might know she's not. I mean, by most standards in the One Piece world, she's not the most beautiful woman. Uh, and she goes out of it in like terms of like spite or something like, oh, I'll take out all the other women. So that I'm the most beautiful. I don't know exactly what her motives are yet. They're not really explained too well. But suffice it to say, Kitsune transform into beautiful women. Katarina Davon goes after beauty, has a very high standard of beauty. So this might be a little bit messed up here, but if she was going to like infiltrate the Straw Hats, I could see her using the Nine-Tail Fox power to either transform into Nami or transform into Robin and, you know, seep in or something. I could see that happening in the future with her, like transforming into some beautiful woman or Hancock or something because that's her whole deal, right? So, yeah, now, uh, with that being the case, now that I'm thinking about it, I really, I mean, uh, physical touch, I mean, she has literally an entire room filled with the, the heads of beautiful women, so if, if she does need to touch them in order to transform into them, then I guess she could just go in and touch them, right? Because it's not necessarily an upgraded version of the Mane Mane no Mi. Um, now, in terms of attacking, well, uh, if she's able to transform into a giant fox, or at least, like, a medium-sized fox, like the height of a nor like the, her normal height, and Katarina Davon is pretty tall already um think she's at least like eight or nine feet tall because all the members of blackbeard's crew are pretty tall um it, you know she transforms into a fox she's got claws she's got fangs she's you know f you know bipedi not bipedial you uh, what's the term for four leg quadpedial whatever anyway she's got four legs she walks on four legs right and so she could jump around a lot foxes are of course known to be very nimble very agile very quick um you know got little pointed nose they're very aerodynamic uh, oh and by the way other fun in fact, um, the the uh, species of fox that is the most prominent in these regions, like Korea, Japan, China, Vietnam, um, is this fox right here, 
who is a cutie and the uh the scientific the taxonomy for this fox the latin term is vulpus vulpus shrecky shrecky well shrek whatever it doesn't matter what the last word is but vulpus as in vulpix that's the origin of that that's the reason why the pokemon's name is vulpix because vulpus there you go now you know and then of course you got the nine-tailed fox that vulpix evolves into and yeah that, that's also adorable there also i i guess it would probably be a good idea to not spoil that katarina davon is the user of the fruit we didn't really get a lot of images of her anyway because it's only in the one chapter so i use nine tails for the thumbnail which i think it looks pretty sexy um yeah hashtag not a fur though right yeah totally right okay um, but yeah, beyond that, I was looking into like, you know, the Kitsune are kind of also regarded as yokai and they're spirits. So, and it's a mythical zone. So you might be able to get away with a few more mythical be uh, like mythical, you know, abilities like willow wisps, like little, little wisps of fire that, you know, like that are basically souls, but you might be able to do that. That's essentially just taking it from Pokemon nine tails as a fire type. And, you know, they have like uh, willow wisp is an ability is a technique that burns your opponent or some other fire ability that they control. Maybe not like to the same level as ace or Sabo has with the Mara Mara Nomi, but maybe just little wisps of fire, because we've seen this from mythical zones before. Some of them do kind of like intersect with other fruits, you know, depending on it. Like, Marco has the Phoenix fruit. He can control fire, but it's the fire of resurrection. Um, uh, Sengoku has the Buddha fruit that can send out shockwaves, not unlike the Gura Gura Nomi, just on a smaller scale. So, we've seen Mythical Zones basically getting the best of both worlds. They get the powers of a zone transforming into an animal, having all the abilities of said animal, like Phoenixes can fly, the Buddha is really huge and, you know, super tough, the Ninetale Fox very agile but also get another ability from like a paramecia class or a logia class uh where they have the ability to control something else so there's pro you know in in davon's case you could just say that oh she can transform into a fox has all the faculties of a fox and her special ability is transformation you could just leave it at that or you could expand upon it a little more but just by looking at everything else going on here um i mean you you could always get you know, anime involved or the Pokemon involved, like, you know, Katarina Davon also has the ability to summon a Bijudama from her mouth that will, is a mountain busting attack, you know, that, that might be a little bit overpowered, but, you know, maybe, I don't know, um, also, there's one more little legend I wanted to tell you guys, a little sprinkle on the end of this story, um, so in Vietnam, the Nine-Tailed Fox lore is a little different, they're called the Ho Tin, and there's, like, only one of them, and it's like this mountain area where it would come down from and terrorize, but that's not the interesting part. So there's a lake in Vietnam, the West Lake of Hanoi, and it's actually, it was formerly known as Fox Corpse Swamp. Because, you want to know why it was called Fox Corpse Swamp? Like, did a lot of foxes wander in there and die? No, because this was apparently the site of like an epic battle back, you know, thousands of years ago where you had like a famous warrior from, you know, Asian lore that fought against a, a giant nine-tailed fox. And they had this epic battle and the the lake was like the site of the battle and they called it the, it's not called that anymore, but it used to be called Fox Corpse Swamp for that reason. And I'm thinking, man, that's brutal. That would be like uh, in Naruto where they have like the Valley of the End where there was the epic battle between Hashirama and Madara. Hashirama won. Well, Madara survived, but you know, he won. That would be like Hashirama comes down from the mountain. He's like, forevermore, this waterfall and lake shall be known as Madara Corpse Lake. <laughs> it's like, that's pretty brutal. But it was also called the Golden Buffalo Lake at one point also because there was apparently a buffalo that mourned the loss of its child, its calf, and uh, that was why it was called Golden Buffalo Lake. Then it was called the Misty Lake for a time. They just call it the West Lake now. Just like, okay, the, the corpse, buffalo, golden, fox, misty... Let's just call it the West Lake. Let's just make it simple. This is getting ridiculous, so there you go there. But, um, yeah, it's pretty much just a, a basic rundown here of what the Kitsunes are packing and what they got. So, uh, I think it fits Katarina Davon quite well. Uh, at first, when I saw her using it, I was like, okay, that kind of came out of left field. The Nine-Tailed Fox Mythical Zone for her. But if you actually read into the Legends, uh, it works. And I... 
she can either infiltrate Wano, or she could use this in any number of ways to trick people. I mean, honestly, we could keep this train going. Absalom goes to the Beehive Island, gets killed, and then Katarina takes the appearance of Absalom to trick Moria. Then Moria gets killed, Perona arrives on the island, and Katarina uses the ability to turn into Moria. It's like, ah, Kishishishi, Perona, you're back! And then Perona shows up, she gets captured or killed, Mihawk arrives, David's like, wow, we're, we're just rolling them in, aren't we? Okay, this fruit is awesome. But yeah. Anyway, thanks for watching the video, everybody. Comment below what you think Katarina Davon can use in the uh, categories of the Kitsune, the Nine-Tailed Fox, and how. Uh, what, what other fruits do you think the Blackbeard Pirates are now currently packing? Leave all that below. Thanks for watching, everybody. Teching 101, signing out. Damn it. Now the power drill.